All right, you guys, let's play chess. I have a 15 minute game on the board. Uh, my opponent's rated 11.09, and we have a Sicilian, so e4 and c5. Um, but more importantly, I've done my preparation. Before you start, you've got to get everything right. Got my glasses of cleverness, got me a cup of coffee, and got my Ghostbusters t shirt. So let's go. The Wing Gambit. My preferred current weapon of choice against the Sicilian. Let's see what happens. Takes. And now there. This really is just taking, I mean, the, the whole point of the Sicilian, right, is to put your pawn on c5, and that prevents this move, right? That's the whole idea. How do I get an orange? Can I get, oh yeah. Yeah? So the whole point is to prevent d4. All right. Now I'm thinking I can take, maybe bishop will take back if I kick the bishop. It's defended by knight and pawn, that's okay. Bishop, if bishop comes back to here, can I play this? I probably can, probably can. But also knight f3 just hits this pawn straight away. Which I, I kind of like that. I'd rather, I'd rather develop pieces than just play with pawns early on. Okay, knight defense. So now I can I can develop my bishop, threaten to capture the knight, which is the defender of the pawn, and then capture the pawn. So that could be good. I think if pawn takes the move is to recapture with the knight. Okay, so let's do this. We might want to keep the board nice and open. If I'm going to be down a bishop, you see my opponent's going to have two bishops. Oh no, so then we want to close the board, right? Okay, but now I do have a free pawn. Which makes me happy. He can't push d6 because I've got this. If he put, The only other way to attack the knight with a pawn would be f6, and that's not great either. He does have this, in which case I'll probably simply retire the knight. Or the knight could even come here, maybe looking at that square, that square. You see how like, I'm ready to castle now. And, ooh, that's not a bad move. And my opponent has no development, so. Didn't see this one. This is good. Okay, so the queen has a fork on the knight and the g2 pawn. I could play d4 now. That's, that's one idea. Defends the knight with a pawn. Centralizes a pawn, controls the center. Two, two good things, right? It does, however, give up this pawn. But I've played a gambit line, and I'm not even down a pawn right now. I can't just castle out of trouble. I could play my knight back to g4, blocking the queen's view of g2, and defending the knight with queenie. That, I think, is probably the best move. Now, if I do that, what's he going to do? He's going to push like d6 or d5 with a discovered attack by the bishop on this knight. But the queen's defending it. I just need to add like another pawn, maybe. What is best? Interesting. Okay. So knight here, I could just even drop straight back here, couldn't I, and defend the, that pawn with my knight. Let's do that. Let's do this. Kind of like that. It's one of those times where it's good to use a minute and a half to think. Okay, so I can just drop back here now. Knight's defended twice by pawns, and the knight is defending that, that pawn itself. All good. <clears throat> there is nothing wrong with this picture. So now I'm getting ready to play d4 again. Let's just review Black's pawns, because he's, he's captured towards the outside there. And then here, he's captured back towards the inside. So he's replaced his c pawn. Okay, so this is where we're up to. So he's got his c pawn back. OK, 
case, attacking my knight, but I, the first thing I see is d4. Kick the bishop, pawns defended by queen. It also moves one of the pieces out of the way for a discovery against the queen. I don't see anything wrong with this. Um, let's say, for example, let's play something else out. If I take here, he takes knight. Yeah, it's going to mess up my pawns. I like this. I, I think this is absolutely fine. He can't take, right? He's going to have to retreat somewhere. Question is, which diagonal is he going to go on? If he evacuates this diagonal, then I can take on b uh, b4. But if he stays on this diagonal, he's pointing down towards my king. There may also be possibilities, because my knight here is on a, a dark square now. Depending on where the bishop goes, <clears throat> the knight may be able to move to a light square. Look at that, right? Light square here, attacking the dark square. Okay, plus discovered attack on the queen. However, it abandons the defense of g2. Which we do not want. Good capture on b4 now. Bishop takes back, I've got c3, strengthens the center. That's all fine. If I go here, he takes there, I take this bishop, he takes back with a knight. Nothing really gained. Notice he's played this though. I could just castle now. I kind of like this idea as well. Also queen f3. I don't have no light squared bishop, so f7 isn't a huge target, right? I'm still drawn to this move though. Or castles. Castles is also good. I'm gonna play this. He grabs material. The bishop comes back here, I have c3, then that puts the question to the bishop again. Now the bishop has to move, and then I get to castle. So what I've done here is I've improved my position, right? From here, this was the situation, where I have an isolated a pawn, right? Isolated a pawn. So bishop goes there, and then we take, take, and this is better. Because now I have a better strong uh, pawn center. My d4 pawn is now uh, protected. And I still have now have this option. But it gives away this. So maybe we should castle first or play queen f3 first. I kind of like queen f3. It feels like it's tying everything together. Like the dude's rug. Movie reference. Yeah, I'm quite happy now. See, look at this center I've managed to get. And my opponent has no pawn control over the center. And his queen is doing all the heavy lifting right now. And that's not very wise. That's interesting. I should definitely get castled. And then try and use some of this sort of space on the queen side to engage my... Uh, my big guns. Something else that springs to mind now. Okay, I can move my knight here or here, right? Both of those come with a discovered attack on the Black Queen, which is a good thing. Now, if I put my knight here, for example, we're attacking the Black Queen, Black Queen has to move, can't take the knight. Then I can come in here with a check on the king. I could lose my knight though, doing that. So it forced the king to move. Let's say let's say king moves here, right? Where's my knight got to? He's got no safe squares. He has got no safe squares. Not from here. Yeah. So he'd be in trouble then. So that's not a good idea. I I do have knight here. That's an idea. Queen can't go there. Could retreat to here. Is my knight's also looking at this square, you see. 
Anything else interesting? This? Not really. Maybe you should just get castled. Let's get castled. Eight minutes on the clock. It's one of the curious things in chess, how when you get a stronger and a weaker player and you just... The stronger player tends to end up with a better position, but no one really knows how. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. Okay, I can still move my knight and block that kind of idea. Also opens up the bishop. And the bishop can't go there. I don't know. That's where it would like to go. How about queen across here? Ooh, queen across here. I'm looking at g7, right? I'm also looking at this rook here. So I've got a threat of the knight coming in. The and then the knight coming to there with check. That'd be good. Let's see if my opponent notices that threat. So see, the idea is this. Opens up the diagonal for my bishop as well. So I'd like to engage my bishop, engage my knight. I have the better center. Material is equal. My opponent has the bishop pair, but hasn't developed this guy yet. And this guy's in a very bad position for a bishop, right? Rear, center, it's not good for a bishop. Okay, good, so he's blocked that, he's seen that idea, he's blocked that, that's fine. Now knight to here, I'm threatening that, the queen can't recapture, I'm also threatening to capture his bishop. I'm just gonna play that straight off, I'm not gonna think too hard about that. I might develop my bishop, my knight come to d2, maybe even to f3. Then my rooks are connected, I've completed development. Black still hasn't completed development. Okay, I spy a free pawn now. And it completely buggers up Black's defense of his king. I go there, right, I'm attacking the rook a bit. I'm threatening to take the queen. Yeah, go on, let's do it. Let's just do it. Also like the fact we've still got dark squared bishop. And look at his pawns. This is something that I see over and over again, right? My pawns, one, two, three around the king. And a central bunch, right? Black's pawns, isolated, isolated. Two, isolated. It's completely fractured. So this should make for an easier middle game ending for white because I have the structure to base on. It's, it's almost like, you know, a game like American football or rugby or soccer. You know, soccer's all about formation of your players. And when your players know where, where they need to be on, on the pitch at any point. Ooh, ooh, he took my knight with his bishop. Okay, so my first thought is, Bishop takes here, he can take with knight or bishop, doesn't really matter, then I'm going to grab that bishop. Okay. It's pretty much forced. My queen's got nowhere to go, can't go there, there. Could maybe have gone to that square, but... See from here. Yeah, no, I couldn't have gone there. So my queen has no safe squares, really. No, no. Okay. Now I have to get the bishop. And this is good for me, you know. So I've captured towards the outside with my pawn, but... I'm happy about that because look, we have an open file, completely open file, which means there's no pawns of either color on that file. Also now, now it's really important to take stock, okay? Undefended pawn, that is actually hanging, which means it's under attack and not defended, okay? Bishop's defending these and blah, 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 blah. Okay, my opponent's idea I think is gonna be this, but that's absolutely fine. I play g3, put my pawns on dark squares. He's got a dark square bishop. That neutralizes the bishop. Um, so first idea is this. Also attacks another loose pawn. Oh, it undefends the knight. Can't do that. Okay, let's engage the knight. The knight's going to come round. Perfect. This is fine. This is fine. Now I have this. and then potentially this. My opponent's down to 8.25, I'm on six and a half minutes. But look at, snug as a bug in a rug, 
Okay, I'm not going to think too hard, but I am going to think. I might even play my knight here and attack this pawn first. No. If I take that, am I worried about the rook coming down here? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to improve my knight. There's no, there's no mega, mega rush. The knight's got a really nice square there. It's looking at this pawn. Okay, push that pawn. And now this is on. And also, knight e5 is great, because it looks at this undefended pawn. Looks at this pawn that's defended only by the king. And my opponent's position now is looking very fragile. Might bring my bishop out there, rook there, pin the bishop, threat to take the knight. Who are you gonna call? Right, I see what you're doing. I see your mind. But I have one pawn, he takes there, I take there, it actually attacks the knight. Then the knight's going to come here though and fork king and bishop. But I don't mind because my king moves, if you want to take my bishop, okay. I have calculated, I think we're alright. I actually come out of that a pawn up. So I'm now two pawns up. So he takes, takes, check, move, takes, rook takes. Happy days. We still, he has an unprotected, uncastled king. You just made one of the classic blunders. First, never get involved in a land war in Asia. Okay, we thought this would happen. We thought this would happen. Exactly as I have foreseen. Knight to year, king to year, knight takes. Either rook could take actually, and that's actually that's not bad because then I have rook c8 defended by another rook. Swap off rooks. <laughs> king would have to move there and win that one. Ha ha! So you'd actually have to block with a bishop. Ooh, blunder! You didn't see this. Just sanity check, make sure it's not stupid. It's not stupid. I see no problem. Yeah, oh dear. But my opponent's rated 1100, you know, we, we make blunders. People make blunders, 1500s make blunders, 1600s make blunders. Uh, you just make more blunders at lower levels, yeah? So I'm quite pleased with my kind of approach to the game today. I have been sanity checking. Now I'm up five materials. So I'm up a knight and two pawns. And which pawns are they? I have a spare f-pawn and I have a, a spare g-pawn. My king doesn't have many squares. I mean, that's, that's uh, an annoyance that I can't go here. So I just need to be conscious of that and we win by resignation all right so how did that happen that's the key thing Sicilian wing gambit okay all so far normal the martial variation whatever that means and um, knight comes out attacking a pawn so now we are starting tactics we're, st we're in the opening but we're starting tactics right tactics is you've got a pawn here that isn't defended and so now this is a normal king's pawn opening with two knights out, but some funkiness going on over there. Attack the defender. Okay, so the idea is remove the defender off the pawn. So this is basically a re Lopez with some pawn action going off over there. Okay, a6, classic re Lopez move, very, very book, right? Takes, takes, pawn falls. Okay. Now, if you were in the Re Lopez, forget about these things, then I, I don't know, you know, I don't really play it, but I don't know, is Queen E7, is that the move? Because then the Knight's going to have to retreat, or White has to play D4 to defend the Knight. I don't know, but anyway. So, but he finds this move, and that's a good move. We like this move. So here I thought for a minute and a half, okay? That's important. 
So I'm using my moves, using my time well. Knight to here blocks that threat and protects this guy. Attacks. Now I come back around to here where it defends this pawn. Now he attacks the defender of the pawn. But I have d4 with tempo. Okay? So what he didn't think was, okay, if I play this... So he only went like one layer deep. d4 is a really good move for me. I'm centralizing my pawn. I now have two pawns in the middle. I'm now controlling a lot of center. Happy days. Bishop has to retreat. I take the pawn. He takes back. c3. Again, you can see how my center is getting better, right? And look at his pawns already, okay? Divided, fragmented, leaderless. Don't know if that's the quote, but... If you can get that film quote as well, that's that's not, not too difficult one, that one. Okay, so here we have proposed exchange of queens. It clearly would be worse for me. Removing this g2 pawn, we don't want that precious. So uh, queen g3, and you know, I would pick I would pick white over black any day of the week. So let's look at the situation from black side of the board. <sighs> I'm uncastled. I've got an isolated a pawn. I've got a forward h pawn. Um, my queen's out and in the way of my knight. So what would I play as black here? I want to get this knight out, so I'd probably want to move my bishop. Maybe some like bishop bishop here, yeah? Bishop here hits the queen, looks down on h2, and gets ready for the knight to develop. That's probably what I'd think about. But he shoots himself in the foot a little bit with d6. And now this bishop is stuck, right? Knight comes in with threats. Okay, we've got two attackers on this, we've got two attackers on this. Counter-attack on the queen. But now queen comes in and we force an exchange of material. Right? So, he prompted this. Queen comes in there where it is defended. Another option could even have been this. No, not really. Don't think so. But yeah, so this this works out well for me. And now look at his pawns, right? He's 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 not been he's not been paying attention to the structure and his development and, and all that kind of good stuff. And now Bishop falls. So yeah, I've got double pawns here, but I've got an open file towards there. Rook comes across for some reason. I develop my knight finally. D5. This is not a bad move. It takes away a couple of squares from that knight. Right, this bishop's still fairly mobile. Knight improves. Okay, which is what you want to do in the middle game. Always be improving. Threatening this pawn. Push. There. There. Then, you know, this is where my opponent starts to kind of lose his, his mojo. Okay, so he sees that, right? Did he see that? But he missed that. this. Missed the fact that rooks and bishops and queens and knights can move backwards and kings. Everything apart from pawns can move backwards and he missed that. Um, rook takes knight and it's game over. But quite honestly, we'll, we'll have a quick look at the game review and see what I missed in that. Um, but the game was, was really, you know, falling out of his grasp from quite early on, yeah, 91.9 for me, very pleased with that, no mistakes, and um, only four inaccuracies. Okay, so let's have a look through from White's perspective. Okay, book move that favours black slightly. Takes, book, good. This is the last book move, okay? E5 is best. Okay, so it's, it's favouring black still. Best, good. Best. Excellent. Best move was d4. Okay, so this is like a classic open Sicilian deal, right? You've got the pawns out. 
we compete we compete for the center straight off if pawn takes knight takes knight takes even queen takes right so that's absolutely fine not much difference okay so i play my bishop out to here he kicks and i take removing the defender um yeah inaccuracy so i think d takes is best yeah okay yeah d takes is best you just got to think re lopez okay so anyway so now i take the point he says that's good but not best what was best castles get castled get the king to safety right the pawn's still there because i think yeah okay so we found the best move that's good and inaccuracy that was not the best move i'm surprised at that what's the best move knight to you that gives up this right huh i mean this is okay and it's saying at the end of all of this we're kind of equal but i don't know i preferred that okay and he says that's a mistake knights there is best good yeah see this this is this definitely is a mistake right because yes he's hitting the knight but he didn't look and consider that the knight has e3 protecting the pawn again he's only thinking one layer deep he just needs to give himself permission to think two layers deep and he'll he'll be a 1200 1300 right straight away knight comes there and look we've weakened this part of the board already bishop comes out half-hearted because d4 is best yes and now i'm plus two straight away i'm plus two bishop retreats good grab the pawn that that's excellent even better would have been castles yeah which we did think about. Bishop comes down again. half assed attack. Bishop has to retreat again. Inaccuracy, because there's something better, which is castles, of course. Yeah, but I just, I liked the idea of putting my queen there. Now I castle, it's excellent, but it's not the best move, it says. Now it wants me to develop my knight, all right. But yeah, but you can see how you know, all right, we, we've, we've had some shenanigans on the queen side, that's fine, but this move, with definitely, definitely weakening. That's excellent, but there was something better. Okay. Well, I'm attacking that twice, but it's defended by a bishop, so I don't want to trade either my rook or my queen for a bishop, but hey-ho. Okay. That's best. Inaccuracy. Was it something better? What was better? Maybe. Uh, best. Da, best, best. Oh, that's all pretty much forced stuff anyway. Uh, knight d2, best, good. That's a mistake. It's a mistake because he's left that pawn hanging, right? Okay. Now, yeah, inaccuracy, but like, I knew I had this, and I thought I wanted to come over after this guy as well. And I knew this was okay for me because there's no light squared bishop, so I don't have to worry too much about weakening the light squares. This is now strengthening the dark squares because this pawn is now covering both of these two squares and that bishop now can't land on them. Well, it could if the king's still there because the pawn would be pinned. Okay, so now he plays this. Good. Best move. Takey inaccuracy because there's another hanging pawn, and I'd say that's more than an inaccuracy because he loses the knight and loses the game. So there you go. Uh, interesting stuff, interesting stuff. Um, there you go, and I, I think the key thing to take away from that is you've, whatever is going on, always factor in. You know, we saw so many little tactics in the opening and the middle game where black tried a tactic to try and get a small advantage but weakened his his overall position so many times and the the opening is about development control the board in a logical solid way you know get your pieces out there and the middle game is about improving your position improve 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 you've got badly placed pieces improve your pieces right and black just didn't do that he was he was doing one-dimensional tactics 
um, but almost like ha- had no consideration for his positional play. And by this point in the game, I'm in just in an extremely comfortable situation because my king is safe, because my pieces are involved, right? And look at Black's king, horrible. It's on an open file, defended by his only remaining minor piece. Um, yeah, there you go. That's how to slaughter an 1100 using this Sicilian wing gambit. I uh, hope that's been useful for you. Thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe to Chess Bootcamp if you haven't subscribed, and I'll see you soon.